Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this right here is the footage from 50 years ago, the Apollo 11 takeoff. Now nothing really beats being there at this particular moment and experiencing the excitement of being part of the adventure. Something like 600 million people tuned in to watch the landing on the moon. However, we're, for the most part, many of us, were not born yet, including of course myself. Now, today I wanted to talk about top 10 things you may have not known about the Apollo 11 mission and most importantly talk a little bit more about how you can learn about this beautiful experience of human race. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. And so here's the thing, in a lot of the videos that I usually make that often talk about the moon, there is always a bunch of conspiracy theorists talking about how it never happened. Now I would like to start with this. There's a beautiful paper by the physicist named David Grimes who specifically for you guys wrote a paper about how exceptionally difficult it is to keep a very large secret by a very large group of people. He even worked out a model that suggests that for roughly around 410,000 people that were responsible for the Apollo mission to keep a secret of such magnitude, it would really only take about three years before someone finally couldn't handle it anymore and would tell everyone that it's fake. You can read the paper, it's really brilliant and it explains why moon landing was not fake and could not have been faked mathematically. And let's begin with the first fact you may have not known about the mission and that's the fact that uh, the Apollo mission had two potential scenarios, the success and the failure. And it just so happens that Richard Nixon, who's seen very happy here, very thoroughly practiced the scenario for failure. As a matter of fact, in case the mission failed, uh, the entire communication would have to be shut down instantly. And that's of course to prevent uh, astronauts from saying something bad on air. And uh, then the president would announce that the mission was a failure. There's a script available online and it was even shown in the movie uh, The First Man. And this image here shows you the second fact you may have not known about the mission, and that's the return of the astronauts. When they came back to Earth, they were actually put into quarantine for about three weeks uh, with a bunch of mice that they even named because they basically became like pets uh, to um, prevent any potential contamination with what the scientists refer to as the lunar plague. They were afraid that there were possibly bacteria on the moon because they didn't know and uh, those bacteria may have infected everyone on Earth. However, there is a problem with that particular idea. When the Apollo capsule returned to Earth, it, um, like previous capsules, had the ocean splashdown that you can see right here. This is from the Apollo 15 mission. And uh, upon the splashdown, the capsule was opened and the astronauts were thoroughly washed with water and all of these rags were then disposed of in the ocean. In other words, this right here would have been the moment when this lunar plague would have made it to the oceans of our planet. But because uh, there is no bacteria here and no life, most likely, um, no lunar plague came to Earth and all of this quarantine stuff was a bit redundant. Fact number three refers to the so-called Apollo insurance covers. Now, before departing for the moon, um, the astronauts wanted to have some sort of life insurance, you know, in case they die and their wives and their children needed to support themselves. But it would have been tremendously expensive to get this insurance. So instead, they came up with a pretty clever idea. They literally signed hundreds and hundreds of envelopes and gave them to their families to keep as a kind of a keepsake because they were already famous and because this would have been posthumously, basically after their death, these would have been worth a fortune. And they would have been able to sell these and survive for a very long time. And it just so happens that uh, relatively recently in 2014, one of such letters was sold at an auction and you can even find out the exact price. Here it actually is at a price of roughly around $28,000. And so imagine selling hundreds of these, it would have been a lot of money. Another interesting fact that most people don't know about is that these beautiful astronaut suits are actually made by a lingerie company, a company that makes uh, bras, underwear and so on. This company known as Playtex uh, was given a contract 
to produce um, astronaut suits with a lot of precision and a lot of mastery. But prior to them getting a contract, they actually got refused. But because they were so persistent, they actually kind of cheated and resubmitted the same proposal, which then got accepted. And so following the acceptance, they established uh, a part of their company known as ILC Dover that has since been making these suits for the past uh, 50 or so years. So basically, all of the NASA suits are made by a famous American company that's even more famous for producing bras. But I think most people don't realize that they're also famous for producing all of the NASA astronaut suits. And unlike a bra, one of these will probably cost you around $100,000. Another fact that most people don't know is that the original tapes where the entire mission was recorded were actually lost a long time ago. Now there's no conspiracy theory behind it, there's really nothing unusual about it, because the, all of this was um, broadcasted in real time, so a lot of copies were made, and so the original tapes didn't really have a priority. And in the 80s, NASA also faced a high shortage of these tapes, they actually needed to reuse them for other missions, and unfortunately many of the tapes most likely got reused in other missions. So in other words, the original footage from the Apollo 11 was unfortunately long lost. There are some indications that there might be still some hidden somewhere, but we just don't really know where they are. And uh, luckily for NASA, they discovered this very high quality footage that they were able to recreate somewhere in Australia of all places. But except for this footage, there's really nothing else we have left except for the copies that were made um, following the initial broadcast back in 1969. And actually, NASA did put a lot of effort in trying to recover these tapes, but uh, as of today, as of 2019, they haven't really found anything anywhere, and we don't really know if they even exist anymore. And the next fact comes from this beautiful flag that you see in the picture. The first American flag to be planted on the moon by uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, unfortunately no longer stands as you see in the picture here. This was taken prior to the departure from the moon, and because the flag was planted so close to the ascent module that was used to escape from the moon, when the engines fired up, they actually unfortunately dislodged the flag from its standing position and it's basically now somewhere on the ground on the moon. Every other flag because of this had to be planted farther away and all of them are still standing except for this one right here. The first flag unfortunately is no longer standing. And what's really interesting about the actual ascent part, and this is by the way the ascent module right here with the landing module on the bottom, this part would uh, stay behind where, whereas this part goes to the orbit of the moon and then reconnects with the return module that would then come back to Earth. Uh, so this part has an engine on the bottom. There's an engine right here that you can't really see. And this engine is controlled with uh, a circuit breaker, basically a switch. Unfortunately for Apollo 11, this switch was damaged by most likely Buzz Aldrin, who accidentally bumped into it with his um, suit. Now, nobody knew that it was damaged until they had to go back to the moon's orbit, basically until they had to escape the moon. And so basically, those two astronauts, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, for a short moment there, were actually stuck on the moon because they could no longer turn on the engine. And Luckily for uh, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin was also an exceptionally smart guy who kind of MacGyvered his way through this. He took a felt pen that uh, looks something like this. This is actually uh, the pen that's currently in the museum in the US. And he was able to stick it inside the circuit breaker and reactivate the engine that way. So he literally used the pen to launch the rocket. You know, this gives a whole new meaning to the pen mightier than the sword uh, expression. And this pen, you can see it in the museum, but it's not the pen that saved the module. The pen that saved the module is actually somewhere in uh, Buzz Aldrin's house, because he decided to keep the pen as a keepsake for saving the mission. This belongs to the third astronaut, Michael Collins. And speaking of Buzz Aldrin, another fact you may have not known before is that he's also an elder in his church in Texas. And he did sort of decide to have a Bible reading session, but also a communion on the moon. So when they landed on the moon, the first thing he did is actually turn off the radio and have an actual Christian communion where he consumed the bread and also, well, the wine, although I'm sure he probably drank something else because alcohol was not allowed there, and 
This actually means that the first ever meal and drink consumed on the moon was a Christian communion meal, which does have a bit of a symbology, but at the same time made some people a little bit angry because they wanted to keep religion separate from this mission. And then there is another interesting fact related to the actual moon rocks and moon dust that was collected as the samples. Upon the return into the capsule, pretty much every astronaut on the Apollo mission described the smell inside the capsule as a kind of unusual, almost like gunpowder smell or something similar to a smell of wet ash in the fireplace. Now, that's a very specific description and all of them sort of confirmed it, but upon the return on Earth, none of this was smelled uh, by other scientists or other astronauts. In other words, the smell disappeared. Today we believe that the reason they smell this is actually because Moon is very, very statically charged. It's very electric. And the actual electrostatic conditions on the Moon even make the dust levitate, as you can see in this photo taken um, sometime a few years ago. Now these electrostatic properties do actually transfer into the moon dust and then when it gets into your nose, they actually activate certain receptors in your nose, creating this unusual sensation of a kind of a ash-like or gunpowder-like smell. This is why they smelled it on the moon, but they didn't really smell it anymore when they got back to Earth, because the electrostatic properties disappeared. So this is something we need to actually understand a little bit better about the moon because it is a very electrically charged place and it might cause a lot of problems for us when we go back there sometime in the next five years or so. Now, how about this? Can you guess what this is? This right here is the next interesting fact you may have not known before and technically it's actually a kind of a joke running between the government agencies, but basically the US Customs decided to demand that the astronauts fill out the customs form upon the return on Earth. As a matter of fact, they told the astronauts to fill this out as accurately as possible because they were coming back into the United States and they also had to tell the customs what exactly are they actually bringing back. And as you can see here, they came back from the moon and they brought back moon rocks and moon dust samples. Now, even though all of this was kind of done for fun, more so than to be serious, it does sort of underline the bureaucracy that a lot of agencies had to deal with back in the days. And one of the more unusual facts that was only recently published in a book and also made public is how Apollo astronauts almost died on the re-entry to Earth's atmosphere. Now, let me try to explain to you how we think it almost happened. Upon their return from the moon, the landing module and the moon module were left behind and only the so-called service module with the actual landing capsule were um, returned back to Earth. But for this to return back to Earth, this landing part has to separate because that's where the heat shields are that will protect the astronauts from re-entering atmosphere, while CSM was supposed to kind of bounce off the atmosphere and uh, most likely spend a little bit time in Earth's orbit and then return somewhere farther away from where the astronauts landed. However, almost none of the missions experienced that. As a matter of fact, for every single mission, including Apollo 11, the CSM started to fall right next to the actual capsule. In other words, while the astronauts were falling through the atmosphere of our planet at roughly around 9 to 10 kilometers per second, right next to them was a huge chunk of metal tumbling everywhere, completely uncontrollable, and at the same time, potentially causing some severe damage to the capsule if it came close to it. None of this was supposed to happen. It was never really calculated to be that way. It was really not supposed to even fall next to the Apollo module, but it did. And Buzz Aldrin specifically reported it on his descent and informed Houston that the CSM was unfortunately very close to them. And at some point he even sounded very nervous because it kept coming around the capsule and was really close to them. So there were many cases during the Apollo 11 mission when the astronauts experienced what you would call a near death experience. So, in other words, they got really lucky to come back alive. And something similar happened in following Apollo missions as well, and unfortunately this has not really been resolved. So pretty much all of the astronauts got really lucky with the CSM module sort of not hitting their capsule and destroying them completely. 
And well, that's kind of it. Those are the major facts I wanted to mention in this video. Although I'm sure there's a lot of other things I haven't really mentioned. Like for example, the fact that Saturn V rocket has the most powerful rocket engine ever produced, or the fact that Apollo 11 mission and further missions encourage the invention and production of various tools and various things we use in daily life. Like for example, the uh, little vacuum cleaners that we all have um, that we use for cleaning our desks. All of those were actually sort of invented for the Apollo mission. But if you'd like to actually re-experience the mission itself and if you'd like to relieve every moment of those eight and a half days, there is a way for you to do this using this beautiful simulation slash website that I'm posting in the description below. Here you can literally jump in from the beginning of the mission and it tells you everything. It shows you everything and you get to relieve the entire mission as if you were there from the beginning. This is absolutely mind blowing. This is absolutely incredible. And you even get some of the footage that was never seen before, at least by general public. So this is a really cool way of relieving the entire thing. And I actually highly recommend that you take a look at it and also go through some of the important parts of the mission by yourself. And on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about the Apollo 11 mission that happened pretty much 50 years ago from when I'm making this video. And in some of the future videos, we'll explore other facts about the past moon missions and also the future moon missions as well. On that note, please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences. And in the comments below, let me know of some other important facts that you know about the mission that I didn't really mention that you'd like others to know as well. See you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.